scar tissue. You see it all around. High unemployment, high debt, high poverty, high inequality. Um, I think the good news is that Greece is out of the intensive care unit and it's beginning to walk again. Um, but the goal is to run. And if Greece wants to run and really grow, uh, a number of things still have to happen. Uh, number one, I think there have to be much more sweeping reforms to upgrade the basic business environment of the economy. Number two, I think the debt situation is not yet resolved in a decisive way. And number three, I think the economy needs oxygen, which is affordable financing from the market at a time when the external environment is becoming more difficult. Interest rates are rising across the world. Markets are becoming more nervous about countries with high debt. So just at the moment when Greece may be able to run, uh, the headwinds are increasing and there is a risk of falling down again. What do you think about uh, the way the Europeans dealt with uh, the debt problem last June? Uh, did the agreement uh, meet your expectations? No, I don't think it's enough. Uh, I think uh, the debt agreement relies on overly optimistic assumptions about growth in the context of very high uh, budget surpluses that are required. I, I think debt agreements are about changing psychology, specifically removing the uncertainty that causes businesses not to hire and not to invest. Uh, and for that uncertainty to be removed, debt agreements need to be very simple and very decisive. I don't think we got that in this agreement. And the reason I don't think we, we got that type of agreement is uh, the German political leadership has yet to make the case to the German people why substantial debt relief for Greece is in Germany's interest, not just Greece's. And until and unless we have that type of political leadership in Europe, and especially Germany, I think the, the, the debt reductions will fall short. Do you believe in the prospects of the Greek economy? Do you think that this country has economic potential? Yes, I do. Uh, economic potential is about demographics and productivity. On demographics, I don't think there's destiny involved. Uh, if you look at most forecasts, they say the Greek population is going to decline by 35% over the next 40 years. But as I travel around the world, uh, I see Greek ex expatriates everywhere with great ideas who are taking risk and building world-class companies. I think a number of those, a substantial percentage of those expatriates would be willing to come home to Greece if only it had stability and growth. And then, you know, on productivity, this is about innovation. And there have been a number of policies in Greece for a number of years that have stifled competition. Um, those policies need to be changed. And it's not just about government getting out of the way. Uh, the Greek government can also take affirmative steps to boost innovation uh, through knowledge creation, creating incentives for risk taking, creating incentives for entrepreneurship. Those are the types of things that can unleash Greece's potential. And uh, how about the strategies and the policies that uh, the creditors uh, used all, this, uh, all these years? Were they the right ones? And I'm referring mainly to the level of austerity that they imposed on Greece. Look, I think some degree of austerity was going to be necessary when we're talking about a 16% budget deficit uh, and the loss of market access. Even if, even if Greece had decided in 2010 not to pay any interest on its debt, the budget deficit still would have been 10%. And without market access, that budget deficit would have had to go to zero overnight, which would have been even more austerity than we saw in the program. I think the mistakes were made on sequencing and composition. What do you mean by that? What do I mean by that? Over-reliance on fiscal austerity up front is counterproductive in a, in a fragile economy uh, that's relatively small and closed and has a fixed exchange rate and a large output gap. It depressed wages, it depressed growth, and it sapped economic potential because capital and labor fled the country. Um, what should have happened in hindsight is we should have had more debt restructuring up front in 2010. Uh, the European bank should not have been repaid in full. That would have reduced the reliance upon fiscal austerity. The other key mistake was thinking that every uncompetitive economy is uncompetitive for the same reasons. Uh, instead of giving Greece a generic laundry list of 100 structural reforms, which ended up paralyzing the Greek government, uh, what would have been better would be to prioritize 
a streamlined list of reforms that had the most potential to lift the binding constraints on Greece's growth and which imposed the least political cost. So that type, of, that type of sequencing and composition, more structural reforms up front, better composition of structural reforms, less reliance on fiscal austerity, more debt restructuring up front, I think in hindsight those were the lessons. Πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέρουσα συνέντευξη, Ελένα. Καλημέρα στην ΑΕΟΡΑ.